This is Fight Fans Radio. Welcome, brand new episode of Fanatics MMA Show. Feels like it's been forever since we have been uh, live on the air. Uh, how's it going, David? Everything is good. Enjoying the uh, UFC shows over the last few weeks. Looking forward to Django Unchained on Christmas. Oh, I cannot wait. I cannot wait to see that movie. Did you see the controversy already? Uh, no, what controversy? What controversy? Oh, conservatives yeah. are up in arms. Drudge Report. Oh, jeez. You need to send me this link. <laughs> Revenge Fantasy on Whitey. Oh, jeez. Not recognizing that there's a difference between slaveholders and whiteys, but these are conservatives after all. So, you know, if they lived 150 years ago, they would have been. So. Wow. I don't even know what to say to that. Um, Fanatics MMA Show. Find us on Twitter uh, at Fanatics MMA. Follow Fight Fans Radio at Fight Fans Radio. Uh, we're on Facebook. Um, facebook.com forward slash fight fans radio and of course you can uh find us on the website fightfansradio.com um so we have a little bit of a bummer news to talk about real quick let's get it out of the way before we move on to mma stuff um we are sans justin cohey today and uh we are sad to say Justin has moved on. He has decided that uh, he can't dedicate the, the amount of time that he thinks he needs to in order to do well um, with Fight Fans Radio and the show. So he is moving on. I'm assuming it has to do with that girl that he's dating, to be honest with you. Really? Yeah. Girls take up a lot of time, man. That time he could be spending on air with us could be actually be time he's spending with her. So. Yeah, I got such a good girlfriend. You really do. You yeah. have an amazing girlfriend. She doesn't give me a hard time. Hi, Sam. I love Sam. Um, so, Kohi is no longer with us, but uh, he has promised... You to- talk about him like he's dead. You know? He's well, moved yeah. on. He's no longer, he's no with, longer us. with us. <laughs> we now mourn uh, Justin Kohi. Bless but good news is, in two weeks, uh, I would be able to preside over his uh, funeral, if need be. I uh, put in my paperwork today to become the, minister. the Reverend Erica Lewis. So uh, That is awesome. I know, it's a lot of fun. There are a lot of different titles that you can choose from. I kind of went with old school reverend just because I like the way it sounds, but there was all kinds of titles you could choose from. Are you going to change it on Facebook to Reverend Erica Lewis? Yeah. I tried. <laughs> Facebook wouldn't <laughs> you know, let me. You? It says I have to use my real name. That is my real name. That Facebook. is your real name now. That is my real name now, Facebook. I don't understand why Facebook is hating on me. I hate that. It's, just, it's racist. It is. It is. It's uh, it's them trying to seg- segregate the, the religious folk. Hmm. So be sure to contact me for your MMA themed weddings in the future. I'll be happy to preside over them. And divorces. divorces. And divorces. I can also uh, absolve people of their sins. So, you know, get on it, folks. Email address Erica at Fight Fans. I might, I, I might need you for the uh, Matt Hamill stuff. When I'm, like, I'm like that bitch. Yes, I can also do last rites. So, um, I'm there for you, buddy. I'm there for you. Um, okay, so what else is going on? Um, there was so much MMA. There's, I feel like we have to reach into the way back bag and kind of pull out stuff from UFC on Fox 5 because we didn't even really get a chance to talk about the numbers for that. Um, I don't think we discussed uh, George St. Pierre. and um, Did we discuss – wait, what, what was the UFC show from two weeks ago? Did we discuss George St. Pierre Carlos Condit? I believe we did. I thought we did that on the last episode that we did, which was the 20th, I believe. I guess. Or the 28th okay. or something like that. I'm so confused. I know. This is what happens. Well, hopefully, we'll be a little bit more consistent. Although, 
uh, with the holiday season here. Um, and I'm also going to UFC 155 uh, next weekend. Um, we will probably miss next weekend. Although I might be able to bring my laptop with me and my setup and do it on the road. It'll be the first time I've actually done it on the road. Um, it might be worth it. I'll let you know. Um, Let's see how the news is too. Yes, sure, very true. Because um, we could just, we could, of course, we should probably preview Kane and JDS itself. The rest of the card, I, that could be all right. But um, hold on a sec. Let me. Right, you want to do that? Uh, we'll do that. Let, let's talk about uh, UFC yeah, on yeah. Fox Five first, though. Uh, the the ratings actually were really good. It looked like at the, its peak, it was five point something something million viewers on Fox for the Ben Henderson versus Nate. Yeah, I don't card. think that takes into account the Spanish station yet. Oh wow! So you think it was even more than that? Yeah, yeah. it's like the ninth highest viewed fight of all time, MMA fight. Oh wow! It did really really well. And what do you attribute that to? Do you? A lot of people are saying because they actually had a month to build it up uh, during football, which definitely does help. Uh, but well, we'll see. We'll see how much football factors in with this next show, right? Like because it's still going to be advertised on football, and if it doesn't do the same ratings, then it's not just football. There's something about BJ Penn, the light, the lightweight title that's over. I think BJ Penn really did did a lot for this show. Do you, do you think so? I, you know, I think it's funny. Um, um, I, I wouldn't really doubt that he, he, he helped the numbers come. I mean, he is BJ Penn. But I think it's funny that uh, Oscar De La Hoya uh, had some comments uh, or, or some critiques for Rory McDonald because he watched the card. Uh, and he referred to BJ Penn as that guy that Rory McDonald fought. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, De La Hoya is not apparently a hardcore fan. No, no, apparently. I mean, Rory, Rory McDonald did beat the living shit out of him. But I think BJ, there was a lot of interest in that fight. BJ convinced people he could actually win, which I didn't really think there was a chance in hell that that would happen. And I think the lightweight title and Nate Diaz, not necessarily Benson Henderson himself, but the, the title and Nate Diaz, I think, is kind of, I think Diaz draws in interest. We're, we're going to see what happens with this next car. So, um, I think you're absolutely right. I think um, Nate Diaz definitely has something to do with it. I mean, the the general audience had seen him once before against Jim Miller. It was an exciting fight. Um, obviously, there were more people turning, tuning in this time. I think it was because of the overall quality of the car. And again, BJ Penn, like you said. Um, but uh, my question... It was a damn good show, too. It was. It was I, a really I was good disappointed show. that the uh, title fight wasn't... Competitive. It was a good fight, but it wasn't really competitive. Do you ben think, Henderson, though, for non, you know, knowledgeable MMA fans, people who are just there just to watch a fight, do you think that they enjoyed that and would be looking forward to seeing the next card in hopes that there will be another absolute beatdown like that? I think I would. I would think so. I think the the card delivered from the you know bottom to top. Again, for me personally, I would have liked to have seen a more competitive fight in the main event, but I don't think, especially people that are not that familiar with the product necessarily would have expected it. And they would have just been really impressed with Ben Henderson. I know people that don't watch MMA and they're like that Ben Henderson guy is a beast who could beat him. You know, they, they watched Ben Henderson for the first time this a few weeks ago and, and he impressed them. This is a very impressive performance. I, I don't know if it's more impressive for a first time viewer or people that, you know, know what Nate Diaz has been doing. Like Nate Diaz is pretty much an elite lightweight and yeah. Ben Henderson took, took him apart. Yeah, it didn't allow him to at any point to get comfortable to get in his range. He was mixing it up well. I thought his striking leg punches looked that I've never yes. seen. Yes, leg awesome. punches. Um, I, I thought his striking looked better. Didn't you think and his striking has, looked has better? Any, I just want to say, has anyone talked more shit while they're getting their ass kicked than ATS? <laughs> I mean, not that's been recorded at least. Um, I mean, he's like he's throwing, he's putting up fingers. He's he's trying to showboat. I'm like you're losing every round. You're getting your ass kicked. Yeah. <laughs> this is not the time for it. Um, do you think th that there was improvement in Ben Henderson's stand up? It, it, to it, me, it at least looked like, like there was. It looked like there was improvement everywhere. Yeah. It was, it was an amazing performance. Um, so, there's before we talk about who may be met next for Ben Henderson, we have to talk about Toothpick Gate. Um, I, I know it's old news now, but we're just getting around to it, and I know you guys love to hear our. 
uh, unsolicited opinions on things like this. So <laughs> what were your thoughts on Toothpick Gate? First off, did you notice Seems- did you notice I didn't notice it, no. Don't I didn't know. notice it. I, I started I think I first read about it from you. Oh yes, I, I was posting furiously on my Facebook wall during the event because I was at the event in uh Seattle and um I'm watching the fight. Um and uh or uh, you know, I'm watching it as I'm working, which I'm supposed to be doing. And I noticed it, I think, after the second round, as he was walking back to his corner. I think it was either second or third round. And I was like, is that a toothpick in his mouth? And I turned to the other guys that are working the event with me. And I'm like, was that a toothpick in his mouth? And, of course, everybody's like, ah, oh, Erica, you're so crazy. You're saying things. You're a crazy little girl. And then, yeah, they all talk like that backstage. I don't know. It's very strange. It's very <laughs> off-putting to me. And then I think it was between the – it was either between the fourth and the fifth round or was the actual uh, fifth round at the end when he was walking to his corner. And you could very clearly see him kind of flip it uh, out of his mouth. Um, And uh, they were like, nope, that's a toothpick. You definitely saw that. And then, you know, there was all this craziness where his manager was saying, no, he gave it to him in between rounds. Uh, and then Ben Hender, when Ben Henderson was directly asked, he kind of was elusive about the answer. Um, you know, I, David, here's the most important question I can ask you about this. Gangsta or stupid? Both, maybe. A little gangsta stupid? A little, little gangsta stupid. It, how would you keep a toothpick in your mouth with a mouth guard? I don't know. The fact that you want to even do that. Well, yeah, well, it, it, it's it's dangerous. It, it's a danger to yourself and to your opponent. Too. Yes, absolutely. I, so I it, it should not it should not be allowed. Apparently, they said there's no rule against this, but there should be. So maybe should. Well, there is a rule against it. There's a rule against bringing foreign objects into the cage, and a toothpick clearly counts yeah, as a foreign object. For them to say that there's no no rule against having toothpicks in the cage what's to stop somebody from bringing a rubber ducky into the cage it's a rubber ducky there's no rule against having a rubber ducky in the cage am i right am i right i agree with you. yeah I, so I not that a rubber ducky would help you very much i know i don't think the, the decision should be overturned or should be anything like that no but i thought the, the response bigger. from the commission was a little lacking yeah i know i agree there because uh, fighters should not be allowed to do this no no there should be consequences if you do Exactly that you know, but what do we know? We're just silly fans. We don't know what we're talking about. We just know how to do your job better than you, Athletic Commission. For shame. Uh, so uh, Gilbert Melendez was actually staying at our hotel um, in Seattle. Yeah. yeah, I talked to him a little bit about uh, about Toothpick Gate. He thought it was just weird. He commented uh-huh. that he thought it was just a very strange thing to do, and um, you know. Nate mentioned it at the post-fight conference, uh, the post-fight presser, that he thinks Gilbert should be next for uh, Ben Henderson. But with the performance Ben of Henderson course he does. put on, yes, of course he does. First off, Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, what? <laughs> but but it, it could make sense. It it makes sense, and it seems that um, it's open season on Strike Force fighters now, as we're seeing them trickle in for matchups uh, now against opponents in the UFC. And we're actually seeing some guys from the UFC going to uh, strike force for their final show. Um, so I think that's really interesting. Um, first off that we're, that we're already seeing that. Um, I think they felt the need to release a, a official presser saying that this would be the last strike force show. Nuh-duh. I think they called it a season finale. I'm like, dude, it's more than a season finale. <laughs> you know, that's a fucking euphemism. A season finale? Yes. Please. If life is a season, then that's yeah, yeah, yeah. a finale for them. Um, it's like those in the UK that refer to the season as series. They're like, series one. It's like, no, it's a season. You ever hear that? Yes, yes. Series two? Series, I'm like, no, season one. Season two, the fucking whole thing is a series. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I don't like when they do that. It's very confusing for us. Uh, uh, us Americans. Us Americans. Yes. English, come on. And everything should be geared the, towards us anyway. Up the English. You know? I know. I know. One day we'll take over and we'll fix all that stuff, including their teeth. So. <laughs> and uh, their teeth or their teeth? Their teeth. I think it should be teeth. Teeth. Uh, <laughs> um, okay, so real quick, just on the Fox Five card, um, 
were you particularly impressed? I mean, obviously Roy McDonald did. Um, the, the his you know it went to a decision. Although I think he could have finished the fight at any time. It almost seemed like he was dragging it out on purpose. Roy McDonald looked like he always beat like thirty pounds. I was not super impressed with decimating BJ Penn at one seventy. No, you weren't impressed. Yeah, I think everybody's done that except uh, Matthews. <laughs> Um, I agree. BJ Penn does not look good at um, 170. Uh, and, and while we were at the event, someone made this comment, and I think it is about as accurate as it can get. The worst thing that could have happened for BJ Penn was to beat Matt Hughes at 170 yeah. because then they gave him this false sense of confidence that he can fight at 170 pounds. And if anything, it, it, his his last few ass weapons at 170 have proven that, that he's not a 170-er. And uh, he needs to stop trying to be a 170-pounder and – um, oh, for sure. We should never see him at 170. It's no. all about retirement, but I could, yes. I could see him at 155, but 170, no. That's, that's I, not his way. I'm just not even sure he, he could do 155 anymore. I I don't know if his heart is in it anymore. Well, he won't get his ass kicked like this. No, he won't, but this I don't was, think he'll win too many guy fights. I don't think he'd win too many fights against some of the, the top tier 155 no, no, right no. now. Ben Henderson would kill him. Yeah, I, I think so, too. Um... I thought Rory looked good, though. I mean, Rory looked good in, yeah, in an absolute he annihilation. He, he looked um, good against a guy that, you know, is overhyped. So, we'll, we'll get to address that when we see Rory McDonald and um, Carlos, Condit, Carlos too. Condit, too, which I think is a great so, matchup. First off, uh, we've talked about it here on the show before. I love the fact that uh, Rory McDonald took the time on the mic after the fight to call out Carlos Condit. Yeah, that's I hate that canned answer of I'll fight whoever the UFC puts in front of me. No. That's not what UFC even wants to hear. They want these guys to set up the fights. And he and did it makes sense to create interest in the fight. Yes, and I think he did a good job. I, I think Rory came out of this fight though, uh to coin a wrestling phrase, he definitely came out as a heel. He's a super heel. He's a super heel. Super fucking heel. Did you see him doing the Ollie shuffle? Yes. That came down Badly that? Wow. at that. It wasn't a very good shuffle but super heel, yeah it wasn't very good. He's got like something is it's not charisma. It's like the opposite of charisma, but people don't like it. It's great. Yeah. Oh, let me see if the source.com has got a, a word that we can use to describe this. Um, so, uh, and also, Alexander Gustafson beat the living piss out of uh, Shogun. Although Shogun had some... Uh, some he had some moments. Some it moments. You know, I'm, Alex is a teammate. I, it, I'm glad he won, but... Shogun, I think at this point is kind of finished. Right. So you, you should have won, and I, maybe even more impressively. Uh, I would agree with that. Um, you know, Shogun was doing his best to deal with a guy who had a, a huge reach advantage against him. Um, he did better against Gustafson than he did against um, John Jones with well, a, a similar reach advantage kind of thing going in there, but. Uh, he was not just all in the reach. Even yes, people would like to exactly. And a lot of people, um, uh, a lot of people try to say that that's the the only reason that John Jones is as dominant as he is, and that's absolute horseshit. It's one factor of many. Exactly. I did see John Jones there, and he actually came over to say hi to me, which was yeah. I saw. I think you opened it on Facebook, and I said something like, "Did you ask him when he's going to do our show?" Oh yeah, he's probably, I probably shouldn't have. Uh, um, mention that i you know next time i see him i'll try and uh, pressure him but he was just finishing up the ultimate fighter i feel like it'll be hard to get him on uh, yeah no i think it will be too but maybe if i just like wear on him after when i see him <laughs> at several events just a little <laughs> just a little just plant a tiny so, seed convince him you're like a misery type of fan <laughs> might be in his better interest to do this <laughs> i am kathy bates let's do this um i don't even think repulsion is what um thesaurus.com is saying, and I don't even think that's the right word too, because it's still, uh, he's still attracting people, but it's just not, um, it's not for the good reasons. I don't know. I infamous is not the right word either. I don't know. Rory, Rory has something. He definitely he's a heel. has something. He's a heel. He's a heel. heel I guess a heel is the only the way we can describe he it. He's a great heel. Yes. And I absolutely love the way he dresses. I know people think he looks like a hipster douchebag, and he does. And I and that's great. It. That's part of it. Yes. I love the slick back <laughs> hair with the part in it. I love the tweed suits with the uh, um, plaid shirts up underneath and the bow ties. I love it all. I love it. And 
Uh, I hope he continues to do it. And um, he really wants to turn fans against him. All he has to do is really come out as gay. Really? That would, um, that would yeah. be it. <laughs> that would be everyone would hate him. That I wonder if I Dana White's that. tune would change after that. That's a that's a good question because he seems to be very. Uh, you guys seem to think I'm homophobic, and I'm not. I really support um, Liz Carmouche, and um, you know, I thought it was really brave for her to come the out. The lack of uh, attention to Liz Carmouche being signed, an openly gay athlete, the first one in UFC at least. Yeah, that's pretty notable, and it, not that much is being said. I mean, more there's more focus on women are here, Ronda Rousey's here. Yeah, it's the first openly gay. I mean, there's a lot of history in that event. Uh, and I think I it's funny think that it. um, it's, Luke I Thomas guess. said the same thing. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, what did Luke say? Luke also said the same thing, that he thought it was strange that only uh, like seemed like the MMA media was touching on it and the, you know, um, GBLTQ. I think there's another letter in there somewhere. LG. It says uh, LGBTQ is what it is, if I'm not mistaken. Bisexual and transgender. Oh, Jesus. There's so many letters. I'm like... Why don't we just all shorten it down to queer? Like, queer is that word that seemed to make a little bit of a turnaround in the last five years. Let's just use that to just address everybody all at once. It shows you that we're like MMA is still not mainstream, you know, because if this was a mainstream sport, it'd be all over it. Yes, exactly. Yes, very, very, very good point. Um, Women in sports, this should be like there should be a lot of mainstream attention to, to UFC having a female fight as the main event. It should, Attention from, like, I think, academia, too. Yeah. You would think there would be, and it is a little surprising that there isn't. Why do you think that is, though, David? Uh, because I think up. mixed martial arts is not mainstream. It's still considered fringe. Fringe sport. It's by, like by you know, polite society. Yes, by polite society. Yeah. <laughs> polite society. <laughs> I like it, yes. I agree with you. Um, uh, what else? I mean, that's why a lot of people think of this, you know, cage fighting. Oh, my God. Oh my God! So, uh, real quick, Gustafson's performance against uh, Shogun. Um, do you think he's ready for John Jones? John Jones? No, no. But I don't think he's going to get John. John Jones has to fight Shell Sonnen, and then I think Alexander will probably get the winner of Dan Henderson Machida, and the winner of that should get John Jones or Shell Sonnen if Shell pulls off a miracle. It's not going to happen. But, you know, um, John Jones is not going to fight again after he fights Chell to, like, summer. So, uh, Alexander, you know, doesn't really make sense to stay on the sidelines. I don't think UFC is going to want him to. I think they're going to want to have the title eliminated. Right, yeah. No, no, I, I don't think you're wrong about that. Um, but you don't think I'm right. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I keep forgetting that's how people interpret that. I just like the way it sounds. Yeah, no, I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> you're not wrong you're not wrong they're like uh can i, I pull right? that shit with samantha all the time <laughs> I don't, you're not wrong <laughs> i love it um so uh there were some uh pretty good performances on the card overall um dennis siever beat the living piss out of nam fan yeah he looked amazing did you see the scores for dennis siever 30 24 Thirty twenty five and thirty twenty six. I actually think the thirty twenty four is probably the most accurate out of all of them. And, and getting back to the scores, there was one judge who did not score the second round in BJ Gordon McDonald ten eight. And to me, if you did not score that round ten eight, you were waiting for someone to actually die in the cage. Yeah, yeah. Good job, guys. Well, at least the uh, the one judge seems to be – there was at least one judge who seemed to be on the ball. There was <laughs> one judge very open to give it 10-8 rounds. Yes. And, and that was also commented about this particular card. There seemed to be a lot more willingness to, to put 10-8 in there. And that maybe, might be because, Maybe the judges had smoked up before because it was legal. Yeah, maybe they were a little high. This was in <laughs> Washington. Yes. Yes, it was. The land of legal weed. I think it became legal as the as brothers – as their plane landed. Yes, I think you're right. <laughs> that yes. exact hour, practically. It was, it was something. Uh, this was could not be coincidence. Uh, maybe it's not. Maybe that maybe that needs to happen that. Uh, before every bout. I need to meet up with the judges and. Did you smoke up there? No, I did not. I didn't have time to do anything. I saw the space needle, and that's only because it, I could see it from my hotel. <laughs> I flew in Friday night. I went to the event. We had to be at the event at 1130 the next day. In the morning? Yes, in the morning. 
and then we got out. Like Saga or Grappler's Quest. You sit around all day. Yes. Waiting. Yes, it was, a, you know, they want us, I think it's two hours earlier, they want us to be there just in case. I don't know what. In case a fight breaks out and they need somebody to, to, to take stats for it, I don't know. But <laughs> two hours early, and um, uh, so I didn't have any time on Saturday to do anything, and then I flew out uh, Sunday morning, so I didn't have time to do anything. So uh, next time, next time I sure. plan to be better prepared for a trip to Seattle and a land of gay marriage and legal weed. Yes. I mean, what else can you ask for? You really can't ask for a whole lot. Maybe some sun, sunshine. For. Some sunshine would have been nice. Um, you know what? With the gay marriage and legal weed, fuck the sunshine. <laughs> uh, I thought it was a pretty impressive performance uh, from Abel Trujillo. Uh, or Trujillo. I don't know how he's... I don't know if he's um, Portuguese or if he's Spanish. But... Uh, or Hispanic, I should say. I apologize. Abel Tru, Trujillo. I am going to say Trujillo. He was the one that beat up on Marcus uh, Levasseur. Like, uh, he stole something from him. It, it was pretty brutal. It was a very brutal um, fight on FX. I don't think I saw that. You didn't see that one? Uh, you uh, might have, I might have skipped that one. You might have skipped that one. It was It was worth seeing just to watch. Uh, I I don't think I've ever seen somebody throw harder elbows. It's like clenched up against. I did the cage. see that actually. Yeah, that, those were pretty vicious. Yeah, like as a judge, even though he was clenched up against the cage, you got to give that that position advantage to Trujillo. He just really just decimated uh, Levasseur's uh, sides and ribs. It was just oh, it was awful. Um, Crookshank looked good against Henry Martinez with a KO. Um, the Ramsey, Najim, and Joe Proctor fight was a snooze fest. Uh, Mike Yeston got his first loss in the UFC against Rafael Asuncao. Um, what, what what were your thoughts on that, my friend? Mm-hmm. No? My thoughts were Joe Rogan's commentary really pissed me off because he was talking about the fight as if Mike was getting his ass kicked. And that most definitely was not happening. Do you I think- thought Mike won the first round. I You know, I think he... He had trouble closing the distance. I loved his takedown defense. It was on point. He was having trouble, and Sun Sao was landing. And I could see giving him the win, but I didn't think it was that impressive. And I, I don't know if you watched it on the uh, – if you listened to, to it with a Rogan commentary, but Rogan oh, we was have second the, third round. We have the commentary yeah. coming through to us as well. So you heard it? Like, yeah. I, I was getting I – was, I was really pissed off, and maybe I'm – too, well, it's it's biased. it's not it's not. Um, I don't think it's. I think you feel emotional about it because you because you are very close to Mike Easton. But it's it's. Uh, are you surprised though? Like, isn't that just the way Joe Rogan calls fights anyway? He just he finds somebody's sack to kind of hang off of. Yeah, yeah. It's not that I was surprised. I just felt like oh, he's friends with Papa, you know, because the way he was calling the fight. He's like Mike better do something. Easton better do something now. Like four minutes left in the third round, and to me it was like a one round. Each at that point, and you know, Mike was the aggressor in the first round. He was the aggressor in all three rounds. Everybody Mike fights ends up backing up the entire time. So, let me. My question for you is: What do you think Mike needs to do, um, or would you, what would you have liked to have seen Mike do in that fight uh, in terms uh, of his adjustments? I guess maybe pull the trigger more. He seemed too hesitant, and I don't know. I haven't. I spoke with him that night, and I haven't spoken with him actually since then about the fight. But uh, it just seemed like he was hesitating a little too much. And Sun Sal was, you know, timing timing Mike's shots, and Mike was missing, and then Sun Sal was landing. I really, again, I was, I like Mike's takedown defense. I think that has improved greatly. Sun Sal, what do you go for? Six takedown attempts, zero for six. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and then Mike went for like one or two takedowns and couldn't get it to the ground. But, you know, maybe if it went to the ground, we could have seen some of Mike's jiu-jitsu. I didn't think it was, you know, that impressive of a, of a win for Sun Tso. Uh You know, and I would agree with that. Uh, you know, I think that it was it was not the strongest fight on, on the preliminaries. Um, it was a pretty bad fight. I felt bad. Mike asked me if, if I thought he fought well, and I was like, yes, Mike, you did, but... I didn't think it was a very good fight, and I'm certainly not going to tell the guy who just got his first loss in the UFC that to his face. So, because um, I did get to talk to him for a hot two seconds backstage after his fight, 
And I spoke with him. He was in a, he was in a fine mood. Was, yeah, was, no, he was, he was, was definitely in a worse mood fine than mood. he was. He was fine. <laughs> yeah, and he, he was. also told me right there. And actually, you know, I'm going to say on the air, it, the news came out that a son Sal found out about his arm the next day. I spoke with Mike like an hour after the fight, and Mike told me that the son Sal told him that he broke his arm that night. So whatever they're talking about, a son Sal finding out about his injury the next day is not definitely not true because I knew about it the night before. Wow. Okay. Good call, my friend. Um, uh, Eve Edwards getting a, a really impressive knockout over Jeremy Stevens. I, there were probably quite a few fans very happy about that because there had been a little bit of controversy about the UFC letting Jeremy Stevens even fight on the card. Um, Scott Jorgensen, uh, I thought this, did you see the Scott Jorgensen, John Albert fight? I did. The thing about John Albert is I like him. I like the kid. I think that he is right on the cusp of, of something, but he's not quite there yet. Uh, and we've seen him start off extremely impressive in his fights. I thought he, I thought he had some really great sweeps in the Jorgensen fight. Um, some great reversals. It was just really a, a great fight between the two of them. Um, and then he, he gets tapped out. Uh, it, it doesn't even give it justice cause they don't even go like milliseconds in the, when they record the time, it was like four minutes, 59, uh, seconds. And then like 0. 0.6663, uh, tack it on there. And that's how close it was, uh, before it was the second round and, um, he tapped, uh, I heard Jorgensen, uh, slaps him on tight. Well, that's what she said. But anyway. Yeah, but I don't understand how you tap with that time left. But you think he was, maybe wasn't aware of how much time? I, I, I hope he wasn't aware. I mean, it, it wasn't an arm, but it was a choke. So uh, what's the worst that happened? You get put to sleep. You should should be aware. You get the 10-second clock. Hopefully your corner is telling you what's up. Don't tap. Don't tap. Don't tap. I don't know. It's an MMA fight. Right. Oh, fuck. I wanted to tap in BJJ. Um. And then, uh, real quick before we move on, Matt Brown versus uh, uh, Mike Swick. Do you think Mike Swick's been out too long, uh, or do you think I heard Matt he got Brown... really sick again the week before the fight? Oh wow! So he might just be just physically not up to this at this point. Right, that'd be sad. It's I too mean, bad. I like yeah. him. Matt Brown looked good in the fight, though. I mean, his grappling looked good, and uh... Matt Brown is a tough guy. Yeah, the house is scared of him. Um, so we'll see if that <laughs> turns into anything. It just still makes me laugh because they were so insistent, like how tough he is. And if you're right, were you watching the Ultimate Fighter that season when you're know, like, Matt Brown, so tough. Yes, tough, yeah. Tough. I was like, the guy's record's like 10 and 8. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I, 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 <laughs> he loses <yeah>. enough. <laughs> I mean, he's got a few wins in the man. UFC. So. His ass is in this house. <laughs> oh, Matt Brown. Uh, I like him. He's, yes. he's fun. He's fun. And, he, and I mean, he's tough to the extent he'll keep. It's tough as in you take a beating. That's tough. So, as far as the guy that's going to be a threat to the top. No. Um. So let's move on. Did you watch the UFC on effects? Uh, Sotiropoulos and Pearson. I know you did because Pearson's your boy. Yeah, I, I watched that fight and I watched uh, Husamar get its ass kicked again, which is great. And then I skipped the other two fights. Um. So, uh, if you missed um, the prelims, uh, totally missed those. you totally missed those. So, Joey Beltran defeated Igor Prokryak uh, via unanimous decision. Joey Beltran looked good. It was the best yeah. he's looked at at, at uh, light heavyweight. He was moving well. Um, you know, he, he seemed to be working on his striking uh, and head movement. He just looked really good. And uh, Pro, uh, Prokryak just seemed to take a very long time to kind of uh, actually get into the fight. So he really didn't become competitive until the second round. And then by, by then, it was just kind of too late. Um, Beltran had the, the momentum throughout the whole fight. Hmm. And um, he looked really good. I was surprised. I was really surprised. Uh, I don't think anybody gave Joey uh, a shot at winning that fight. Mike Pierce uh, defeated Seth Pazinski via John Fitching. Um uh. Uh, were there any? There weren't really. Chad Mendez um, won in his fight, which I actually did not see. Did I not? Did I see that fight? I don't think I saw that fight. I know I didn't. I might have skipped that one, and you know, 
Chad Money Mendez. They're trying to. They're desperately trying to give him a bunch of wins so they can um, put him back up there. But uh, I, I just don't think he's diverse enough to really give um, Aldo a run for his money. Um, and Hector Lombard looking good in his fight against Husamar Pilaris. Oh, yeah. uh, do you think the fact that Pilaris broke his foot in the in the first few minutes of the round should have any kind of weight on uh, or, or take away from the victory that Lombard had? I don't think Husamar is. You know, that he's got that great an overall game, necessarily. You know, he's got that threat to, to break your foot, to break your knee, to the knee up. But aside from that, I don't think, you know, his stand-up is not top level. No, it's so not, not at all. We'll, we'll see. You know, Hector was hurt going into that first fight in UFC when he fought Tim Bosch. So that doesn't really tell you much. And this might not tell you much either. I don't think Hector Lombard's going to be a threat for the title. No. But he, he's going to put on some exciting fights. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And I, I'm looking. Kick Tusamar's ass. I loved it. I loved it. <laughs> it was good. It was really good watching Polaris get uh, pounded on for a while. Um, the two f- uh, tough uh, smashes finale fights were terrible, terrible. Uh, although Park and Fletcher had some interesting moments, um, I just they were not good fights. Uh, and then the main event between Pearson and Sotoropoulos, uh, to be honest with you, I, I didn't think it was going to be competitive before this fight. Uh, I, I don't, I didn't see the entire fight. Uh, I can't remember what I had to do. I had something to do. I had to be somewhere. Um, but uh, did you think the fight was even remotely competitive? I'm sorry? Between Pearson and Sotoropoulos, did you think it was even remotely competitive? It, there were times when Sotoropoulos was, it, it wasn't an ass mauling. Hmm. Wasn't it? Well, you, you, as well? Was it? Yeah. I, I, no, I, I, I thought <clears throat> there were times Sotiropoulos looked like he might actually challenge him. I mean, I was rooting against him anyway. So yeah, I mean, Sotiropoulos, he just he seems Sotiropoulos is uh, come on. He's a one trick yeah. pony, in my opinion. So um, I just thought Pearson. I, looked... I thought he did get some offense. That's why I'm no. I, to be honest with you, I missed most of the fight, so I, I know. Okay, that <laughs> so, like, that's I why I'm asking you. I don't remember being like. Completely one-sided. You should say he I was. was. Be like, yeah, really Pearson. Um, but uh, from what I understand, Pearson looked uh, amazing during that fight. Yeah, and, yeah uh, but it's against Sotiropoulos. <laughs> and apparently, and, 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 and then did you hear, I'm sure you did, what, what took place off camera and tough? Oh, yeah, something about Sotiropoulos, is, one of Sotiropoulos' dudes. How do you say his name? Possessive. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, his One of his boys... Did something to to, to Pearson's? No, no Sotiropoulos himself. And, oh, was it him? And, yeah, Pearson and Aaron Aaron Beach, uh, the boxing coach, knocked out Sotiropoulos, knocked him cold. <laughs> that was the story. Wow! Wow, that's yeah, awesome. That's, and and, and Sotiropoulos didn't deny it, so clearly it happened. Because yeah. if it didn't happen, you would have heard right away it didn't happen. Uh, and, and Ross said that's why he doesn't like him, but he couldn't say anything until after Tough was over. Um, and I, I don't suppose you watched the Bellator fight. Um, uh, I think I DVR'd it and didn't watch it. Uh, there's <laughs> a couple of good fights on there, and by a couple, I mean really one. Um, and just it was just imp- impressive to watch uh, Louis Taylor, um, KO. I mean, out cold a guy while he's in his guard. Um, and that was just pretty. I think I saw that. Yeah, it was it was half guard. It was top half guard, but he just. Uh, uh, Vidipo, I guess his name is his name Joe Vidipo, Videpo. Uh, he was out cold in that fight, so it was uh, that was interesting. The heavyweight fight was garbage, and then they had to call off the lightweight finale, um, tournament yeah, finale yeah. fight because one of the guys was too young to be in the casino. <laughs> I, <laughs> how do you not know that going in? That's really I don't know. That's just <laughs> I guess you don't even really think about it if he's like performing there that he can't even perform there, whatever. Um. The the tough sixteen finale was really good, uh, in my opinion. Just a really nice oh, yeah. action packed card. Um, feel bad for Jerry Papazian um, losing out to Timothy Elliott, but it was a great I didn't fight. See that. Oh, you didn't see it? It was a great no, fight, man. It was TV. a really great fight. Yeah, um, Papazian actually posted something on his Facebook. He's like, I don't care if I lost. He got my ass kicked. I had a great fight. I'd rather have a great fight than a boring win. Uh, yeah. Uh, Rio and uh, John Kofer had a really good back and forth until Rio was able to get a submission win on Kofer. Uh, 
Hugo Viana defeated Ruben Duran via T- TKO in the first round. Um, TJ Waldberger, I can't believe somebody on uh, MMA Junkie put down uh, TJ Waldberger by his real name, which is Anthony Waldberger. And I was like, who the hell is Anthony? <laughs> and why is he in there against Nick Catone? Oh, that's TJ. TJ Waldberg. Maybe he's changing it. Maybe he's going by Anthony now. Who knows? But he he beat Nick uh, Catone by a really great um, triangle choke in the second round. TJ, he's probably going by Tony. Yeah, let's we'll, we'll call him Tony. Tony, Tony, Tony. Uh, Tony Wahlberg beat Nick Catone. It, did you see that submission? Did you watch the uh, – oh, it was on fuel. Never mind. Moving on. Uh, Bedford looked good uh, against Marcus um, Venetius. Um, Pyle looked really good against James Head. He was able to uh, kind of uh, uh, withstand uh, – oh, I'm sorry. Somebody sent me a message. Stop sending me a message. I'm on air. Um, Jesus. I know. Um, Pyle uh, was able to um, kind of recover from a, a little bit of a scare from Jay's head. Uh, mind you, the fight only went went less than t- two minutes, so it wasn't that much of a scare. Um, I like James Head. I think he has a lot of potential. I think he doesn't protect himself very well. He needs to, to work on his defense, his stand-up defense. But uh, And then Mike Pyle knocked him the H-E double hockey, hockey sticks out. So uh, that was an interesting fight. Uh, Poirier, of course, um, demolished Jonathan Brookins like I thought he would. Um <laughs> Pat Barry, I think, actually got up some got up some really really bad situations against Shane Del Rosario. Um, that was fun. Yeah, he, you know, he got his submission defense looked good. He uh, <clears throat> his submission defense looked good, and then when he got back on his feet, he was able to kind of recover and uh, defeat Shane. I like Shane Del Rosario. I think I I also think he's a guy who is right on the cusp of being really really good, but just not quite there yet. Um, the tough finale fight, of course, if anybody's surprised, was boring as hell. And uh, Roy Nelson knocked out Matt Mitrion, uh, who was actually, I thought Matt Mitrion was, was doing a really good job of landing punches, but he, he just, he was backing straight up and got caught uh, by Roy Nelson. So not not really a big surprise, but I think Matt Mitrion will, will be back. He's on the UFC's good side for taking a fight on short notice, or at least he should be. I agree. Yeah. Um, all right, so next weekend we have UFC 155 coming up. Um, David, you say you're really only excited about the main event. You, you're not interested in any of the other fights on the card? Uh, not terribly interested. I, I will watch them for free, but not as interested as I was in the Fox show, not as interested as I'll be in the Jose Aldo, Frankie Edgar show. It really? seems like they have some fun fights on the undercard, but nothing that I feel compelled to actually buy at this point. Well, we got um, Melvin Guillard and Jamie, Jamie Varner removed yeah, to this card, really. so that should be a really good fight, and it'll be on FX. A fun fight. Yeah, yeah that is on FX. Um, we have the return of Todd Duffy on this card, which I'm very excited about. Um, and uh, he'll be fight- facing Philip DeFries. Uh Miles Jury versus Michael Johnson. I think Michael Johnson has looked very, very good in his last few fights. Um, Brad Pickett versus Eddie Wineland. Uh, I, I've always liked watching Brad Pickett fight. Uh, he's a very, very exciting fighter, very, very fast. Um, and I don't expect anything less. Um, uh, Carlos Romola had to re- remove himself from the card. He's being replaced by a strike force fighter, Derek Brunson, um, who may quite possibly stink up this card by getting a win over Chris Lieben via blanket. But, uh, hopefully Chris Lieben can knock him out. Fairly quickly get a, get a win up underneath his belt and move us along to the fight that we really want to see: Alan Belcher versus Yushin Okami. Um, I, you know, Yushin Okami may not be the most exciting fighter in the world. His may not be, <laughs> but Alan Belcher is a tricky some bitch, and I, I think he, he'll make it in an exciting fight uh, against Okami. Uh, how do you You're see? You're an optimist. I am an optimist. I am an optimist. How do you see that fight going? You know. That is, I, I'm looking at that as like a toss-up. I think Okami, Okami, if he could stop, if he can implement his wrestling, I think he can probably smother Belcher. But if, uh, if it stays standing, I think I favor Belcher. Yeah. And, and Belcher, um, obviously very, very impressive on the ground as a grappler. You know, we saw that in his Husamar Polaris fight where he was able to out 
um, basically out leg lock the leg lock. True. So, true. Um, I don't know. I think on the ground, I, I don't see Okami actually submitting him. I could see Okami wrestle fucking. Yeah, no, 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 you're absolutely right. I'm wondering if Belcher, because he is so big, they're both really big 185ers, so that might actually cancel each other out um, in that fight, you know, anybody having any kind of size advantage. Uh, Tim Bose was supposed to fight um, Blanky here. Help me. Isn't it Costa Filippo? It is now, but he wasn't, that wasn't his original opponent. Oh, I don't know who the original opponent was. Chris Weidman was his original opponent. You don't Uh-oh. remember that? Chris Weidman, he was originally supposed to fight, face Chris Weidman on this card, which really just kind of, in my opinion, made this card amazing. Um, but Chris Weidman had to pull out That's for a lot of reasons. <laughs> um, and now he's fighting uh, Konstantinos Filippo. I mean, I just don't see Filippo having the skills to beat Tim Bosch in this. I, I think they both hit hard, but I think probably Tim Bosch hits a little harder. Uh, I expect Tim Bosch to come away with the win. I don't know. No? I don't know. I I don't disagree. See, See what I mean? <laughs> You're a jerk. Uh, Joe Lauzon versus Jim Miller should be a really exciting fight on this card. Um, yeah, but you see what I mean by like none of these fights are, are, are making me want to buy this show. I, no, I don't see what you mean because these fights these fights do make me want to buy the show. That's our difference here. I, mean, I think I Joe Lauzon. Watch these fights; they might be exciting fights, but. Miller but Lozon. I don't want to pay for, for Joe Lozon. Don't I don't you, want to pay for Tim Bosch. You don't want to pay for exciting fights? Isn't that mm-hmm. what people buy pay-per-views for exciting fights? Mm-hmm. Not necessarily just exciting fights. No. I mean, you I don't buy, you don't buy cards for exciting certainly. fights. I think most people do. I think most people buy the cards because they want to see a good fight. No, I think people are buying fights for particular names. And that's why George St. Pierre, even when he has boring fights, people still want to buy his fights. I think George St. Pierre is, uh, and you know this as much as I do, that he's an exception to the role. He just has a really big following in Canada that doesn't count. But if we if we talk about guys who, um, you know, people who buy pay per views, I think that they are uh, they're buying it for name value, but they're also buying it because they they're expecting to see a good fight. I don't think anybody buys a pay per view expecting to see bad fights. No, 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 of course not. But just. Having exciting fights alone is not going to sell the show. I don't know if I said that, but people do buy fights expecting good, buy cards expecting good fights. And I expect good fights. I don't know. Fight. Tito Ortiz used to draw in a lot, not having very exciting fights. He Matt is, Hughes at times would not have exciting fights. I, 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 I don't know. Times. I think it's more name value. I agree that people don't want to see boring fights. I don't, and I don't know if I would say that Tito Ortiz uh, wasn't. Uh, maybe he wasn't the most exciting fighter in the cage, but he had a lot of charisma. That's what drew people in. Yes, yes. Uh, Matt Hughes, it. I disagree. I think Matt Hughes had some really good fights. He had some really classic fights. So, uh, mind you, his last couple of ones may not have been the most exciting, and, and certainly his matchup with BJ Penn. Um, where he got KTFO was not the most exciting performance from him. But we've seen some really, really good performances from Matt Hughes. Um, and at one point, he was considered a very exciting fighter. So I don't know. I, I, I would pay for this card, especially for this headlining fight. It might be the headlining fight makes it all worth it. Uh, Junior Dos Santos versus Cain Velasquez 2. We've talked about it a few times on the show, but um, who are you picking in this fight, David, and why? I'm picking Kane Velasquez because Kane will shut him down. Will shut Dos Santos down with uh, Kane's cardio. Dos Santos gets tired. If this guy goes longer than one round, this is Kane's fight. Kane's going to smash him. If Dos Santos is going to win, it's going to have to be early. Like I said, the first round because Junior Dos Santos noticeably slows down every time he's been forced to go longer than a one round. Roy Nelson he got very tired. And I don't look at the first fight as instructive here because both those guys were injured. Kane was, his knee was really fucked up. I think the video has just hit the internet, actually, of the injury he had before the first fight. So uh, I don't expect to see a repeat of the first fight. I would hope that Kane decides that perhaps eating shots is not the best tactic for, for a fight and uh, will actually keep his hands up and 
will uh, force Dos Santos into a deep water. And I don't think Junior's going to be able to, to to hang with him once this fight goes longer than five minutes. I couldn't agree with you more, David. I, I, that's pretty much everything that I would have said um, going into the second fight. I know a lot of people are really high on Junior Dos Santos. Um, and uh, there was recently an article published on Bloody Elbow where uh, Jack Slack goes over why he thinks uh, Cain Velasquez boxing is pretty much overrated. Um, and it might be, but his, his, maybe, maybe. his, his wrestling... Uh, I don't not. expect Cain to, to knock out those Santos. I can see him taking him down and smashing him. Yes. Yes, I was about to say his wrestling, however, is not overrated. And I, I definitely expect oh, to see... If, if, if it's not another quick victory, I don't really, unless Junior Dos Santos has turned up his, his conditioning, it's not going to be pretty because Kane doesn't get tired. Yeah. And Junior does. I mean, we know that. Yes, we've seen that. And uh, that that will be a problem for um, JD. I'm just hoping, I'm hoping it gets out of the first round because I'm very confident at that point. Yeah, and the rumor has it that uh, uh, Kane gets. Uh, um, Easily hit in the first round, but once you get out, once he gets out of the first round, that that's when he really seems to wake up, and uh, so that's what we're looking for. We're looking for uh, Kane to get out of this first round, and uh, I expect him to turn it up in, in the, the later rounds. Uh, once round three comes along, three and four, I, I expect to see JDS slow down, and um, you know he's talking about being able to submit him, but I, I think Kane has way too much of a a, a top game to really. Um, uh, 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 too too good of a top game to really. Um, oh yeah, it's not gonna happen. Uh, get submitted by him. No. So yeah, no, if it's down there, Junior's gonna get it smashed. Yeah. What the fuck's happening? You know, same, same thing that happened when Kane smashed Brock Lesnar. Yeah. Massacred yeah. Bigfoot. Yeah. Massacred is a good word. For <laughs> yeah, it was a fucking bloody massacre. Jeez. Um, so real quick, I, uh, Scary man. Uh, I want to end the show at six. If, uh, you let's talk real quick about, uh, what seems to be the latest controversy right now that everybody's kind of up in arms about. And we, and you kind of mentioned it before we got on air. Um, or I, maybe I mentioned it because I, I misinterpreted what you were asking me about, but, uh, we did have a, a mutual Facebook friend, uh, kind of st- Poo-poo well, I mean, on. you know what? Wasn't it from Henderson's people? Like that's what we should focus on, not just right. Um, Didn't Dan Henderson's people say something, and that's what started it? I'm I'm not sure that uh, it, that was what started it. I think the question was asked because it had already started. Really? Okay. That, I mean, that's my impression. I could be completely wrong. It's possible. It's happened before. It'll happen again. But uh, I got the impression that there was already like buzz about this. Like, why is Ronda Rousey headlining against these legends? And uh, uh, the answer, you know, again, Dana White uh, can be very much a petulant child when he talks about uh, his baby, the UFC, and um, the way that he protects it and or perceives himself as protecting it. But uh, I can definitely tell you that. Uh, um, the reason that he gave makes sense, and that is when is a title fight ever in UFC history co-main event? Of course, co- co-main event a non-title fight, never. And and whether you like to hear it or not, I mean they are legends, but neither one of them holds a title, so you don't get top billing unless you have gold around your waist. Period. And they're having a three-round fight. You want to get? You're going to put on the five-round fight before the three-round fight. The whole thing is insane. And, and we should point out that there have been plenty of, when they incorporated the lighter weight divisions, you had these, you had guys defending titles against against fighters who maybe were also ran from other divisions, and they were main eventing as well, and nobody complained. And you have Johnson against John Dodson main eventing the next Fox show when Rampage is on the show, and Cowboy Donald Cerrone is on the show, and they're much better known. Than, than John Dodson and Johnson, and that 125 pound title is not over at all, and that's the main event, and you don't have people complaining about that. It makes no sense at all. It's just misogyny. Yeah, I, and I agree with you. Sexism, plain and, plain and simple. That's all it is. It's hypocrisy because there have been examples of, of, of men coming in. Okay, Liz Carmouche is not that well known, but look, Jose Aldo 
defend the, t- the title against Manigan Borian at one point. Still a main event. And the fact of the matter is Ronda Rousey is a star. She gets media attention. Dan Henderson's never proven a draw ever in his life. Yeah. It's pretty much washed up. Make it a five-round fight, and if it goes more than three rounds, he's going to gas out. I agree. Um, so, you know, I think that you brought up some really great points. and uh, People it, want to see it fail. Yeah. Yeah, they do. They Which really I actually do. think I'm going to order that show. I don't think I would have ordered it, you know. Without this little bit. Lines. Yeah, yeah, but I, you know, I want to, I want to offer my support there. Even though, even if it's a failure, it's not going to matter. Ronda Rousey is going to get another chance, unless Ronda Rousey loses, but she'll get another chance against Cyborg, and that's going to be a big success. But I would like to see this show do, you know, at least three hundred thousand buys, shut some people up. They won't shut up though. No, and um. You know, what are your thoughts in terms of the the kind of numbers that that, that show should bring in? I think it should bring in um, a, a decent amount. You know, you want to think about, uh, I would say two fifty, maybe three hundred thousand, maybe a little bit more, considering that Ronda Rousey has a little bit more fame up underneath her belt. Um, I mean, that's a huge it, success because Liz Carmouche is not known at all. If exactly. it does two hundred fifty, three hundred thousand, you talk if you had. The lighter weight guys in there with somebody that wasn't known, like Carmouche, to the general public, they they wouldn't do that. You know, they do two hundred thousand, hundred fifty thousand, like any of the lighter weight. If this fight does two hundred fifty, three hundred thousand buys, that is an enormous success. It shows Ronda Rousey. It's not only a TV draw, but a, a pay per view draw too. And yeah. the, and the real test will come Rousey against Cyborg. Because that could do some some decent business. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and uh, one fifty five, and then one fifty six is coming up as well. And that is coming up in I don't even know the date. I'm going to that one. I don't even know the date. I think it's uh, beginning of February. Yes, yeah, Super Bowl weekend, right? Yes. Must be the first day of February, second day of February. Uh, yeah, it is because it's uh, I leave. I think it's the second. If yeah, I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's that's the show that I really want to see. Um, he keeps saying that. Uh, let me look at this uh, fight card because I don't remember being that excited about it. Aldo versus Edgar for some reason doesn't really excite me anymore. Evan Dunham versus Gleason Tebow. I mean, I guess uh, Benavidez versus McCall. I think that'll be a really good fight. Um. Heron versus Eric Silva. Okay, all right. John Fitch versus Damian Maya. Oh, boy. Overeem versus Silva, Bigfoot Silva. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Rashad Evans versus Big uh, Little Nog. No, not at all. That does nothing for me. That doesn't move the needle one bit. But uh, Aldo Egger, Overeem Silva, Fitch Maya. Fucking interest me. All those fights interest me. And, and I like her shot. I mean, I agree, I agree Little Nog is Little Nog. But. No, no, no. It's not just that Little Nog is Little Nog. Rashad is Rashad as well. Rashad doesn't have the most exciting fights. I don't know why we think he does, because he moves Bob's his head a lot, I guess. but He knocks people out. I like. I just like him. He's I knocked out like two Shad people. Evans. Two. Sean Salmon and Ice. What is, what is, Where's what is, Griffin? Chuck Liddell. He didn't knock him he out. He did not Chuck knock Liddell him out. A coma. It, he did. He did get a TKO victory over Forrest Griffin, but that was not a knockout. Oh, and not. Forrest Griffin, at that point, was already on his way out as being any kind of elite fighter. You hit the man once really well, and he's just kind of flailing. I don't give a shit. I like Rashad Evans too. That all right? Stop being racist. I can't help it. Damn black people, and co-main eventing. I just, I you know. I agree. You, know, you should yeah. move him to the back so, of the card. I think that's where he belongs. Oh wow! That I hope he pulls a Rosa Parks. <laughs> the front. Oh my God, we're terrible people. I <laughs> hope everybody knows that we are absolutely terrible people. Um. All right, but we will review that card. Um. Before it comes up, before before it comes up, and we've got quite. Yeah, I think I'm more excited about Aldo Edgar. Edgar than I know I am. That's that's why it makes me feel bad because it. I think Aldo's going to win the fight, and then what happens to Edgar? What does he do? He's kind of stuck in the stuck in the middle, you know. 
We'll see. We'll see. I'm not so sh- you know, I, I favor Aldo, but Frankie Edgar's a tough motherfucker, man. That, that dude. Shit. His last fight against Ben Henderson. Look what Ben Henderson did to Nate Diaz. And the last fight with Frankie Edgar and Ben Henderson was super close. And, that, and that's from a small guy. Let's see him at 145. Oh, we got a call. Yeah. Uh, call? Who are we talking to? I had to jump in on this one here. Uh-oh. What's up, guys? What's going hey, on, Terrence? I mean, y'all don't call, don't write, nothing. <laughs> you know? Sorry, man. So what's going on? Nothing. I, I just had to rewind real quick on the uh, the Ronda Rousey thing. And, and I'm not a hater. You know, I might play that on TV. But, <laughs> I, you know, I mean, they just said, you know, 210,000 buys would be a success. But. Isn't that sort of like the uh, minimum UFC uh, pay-per-view buy rate? So that wouldn't be a success if that's what they're going to draw, even if she's on there or not. I think a success would be if she drew maybe five or six hundred k. And I, I don't. Well, think if she was, in, if she was against, success. if she was against Cyborg, she would. Against Liz Carmouche, you have to look at it as what, what what would one of the men do with a with a total unknown, and they wouldn't even do that. And the bottom out, I think, is more like two hundred thousand at this point. If she if she does what's pretty much you know the average business for for this fight, that's a huge success. I, I think. Right. Yeah, but I I think that you know over long time over long term I don't think her numbers would be anywhere of eight hundred thousand or nine hundred thousand. I mean, she probably but be how around many men, the mid How many men are? How many men draw that? Actually, none right now. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I, I just think that she's more she's more be be more of a TV vehicle than a pay per view vehicle. And you already see, you know, Dan Henderson. He's crying about, you know, being upstage. He's not in the main event. And you know, I think her being in the UFC is going to create a lot of, you know, a lot of guys, a lot of ill feelings towards her. Just seeing how they've been pushing her to the moon, and a lot of other guys been backstaged or backstabbed rather. So. I think that's going to create a, a lot of discontent when a lot of these women get their attention, you know, once they, you know, really are full force in the UFC. And with her, and you may not like this, I just think that she's Kimbo Slice all over again because she's the main draw. And if she loses, then what happens to that division? You know, she get a rematch, and then we go on to, you know, whoever may have the belt, and they are they going to get top billing if Ronda Rousey is not the champion? You know, is Misha Tate going to be the main event on a pay per view? fighting somebody else. So I think it's more to it than just, you know, it's just a title. It's just, it's her. Nobody else would get that same billing. Well, no, I think what would happen, it's not that the, I think the card would be look completely different if it, or uh, whatever card that fight would end up on. If Misha Tate was the, the, the belt holder, um, then she would probably be on a card with another title that would take top billing over her. But you notice there are no other title fights on, on this particular card. It or you is, put her on a fuel card. Or you put her on a fuel card. Um, I, I think I think you're right, Terrence. I think it's definitely part of it is uh, you know it is Ronda Rousey, but it also at the end of the day there are no other title fights. If 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 Henderson and Machida were both fighting for let's say an interim title, and they were given second billing to her, this argument would be completely valid. But that's not the case. Neither one of them are title holders, so you know what? You don't get top billing. Like, I don't care how much experience you have. It's just not the way that it works out. Uh, the person with the gold gets the, uh, gets the preference. And, um, I mean, that's just, that's, just, that's just what's happening, you know. And, again, I think if it was Misha Tate or if it was um, Sarah, uh, who was the girl she just Kaufman. Uh, Kaufman. Kaufman. <laughs> uh, if it had been Sarah Kaufman. Uh, with the with the gold strapped around their waist, then that fight would have been put on a card with another uh, title fight. Probably the lightweight dudes, um, and uh, it would have uh, been two title fights on the card instead of just one. That, I mean, that's just my thoughts. I don't know. Uh, I could be completely wrong, but I, I think it's a combination of a lot of things. And I think the fanboys bitching about it is just even more. I don't know. It's just annoying. Come on, guys. Let's, let's. Yeah. And then I was looking back at the um, the numbers for pay per views. And you're David. You're saying two hundred thousand maybe the bottom out. I mean, Silva versus Franklin two got a hundred and forty, mm. and Henderson versus Edgar two got a hundred and ninety. So, really, I mean. Yeah. So three hundred thousand would be spectacular, actually. <laughs> I don't know. One hundred and forty is just that's 
Wow. And, she, and, and this, it, it is the Ronda Rousey show, and you probably wouldn't have a – I shouldn't even say probably. You definitely wouldn't have a women's division there right now. But what happens if Ronda Rousey loses? We, we'll deal with that when it happens. Right now they're trying to build a division. You had shallow men's divisions. You still have shallow men's divisions at 125. And, you know, I don't see anything wrong with giving a top billing to, to Ronda Rousey defending her title. Terrence, she might be right. She might just be a TV commodity. Maybe people aren't willing to buy it, but you have to test it and find out. Uh, I think I think it's just it's just a gamble. I think you know with her. I think Fox would have been the would have been the best option to put her on a Fox show. And you see how those numbers do. If you draw huge numbers with her on Fox, then down the road, you know you still got that uh, that five fight in play that you can put on pay per view. I think by putting her first UFC fight on pay per view is a mistake. I think they should have just you know went with, with her on Fox or FX to try to pop a huge number. And then you could, you know, bring Cyborg in if, if she won. And, you know, I mean, they consciously didn't do that. They they had the Burrell McDonald fight around the same time, and they're putting that on. Is it fuel? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they could have had Burrell McDonald co headline here. They could have had Ronda Rousey defend on fuel. They chose. They want to see what's going to happen with Ronda Rousey on pay per view with a nobody at first. I don't mean a nobody. I should. This coming, which is not a nobody. I mean, somebody that nobody knows on a mainstream level as far as, like, fan. Her name recognition would be very low even among UFC fans. Well, it's just like, you know, putting, you know, Forrest Griffin in, in the last, not Forrest Griffin, uh, Stephen Bond in a fight, you know, Anderson Silver in the last fight. Ah, uh, Stephen Bonner, more people people know Stephen Bonner than around. Who's uh, uh, Yeah, that's true. I'm talking about, like, far as the uh, talent-wise where, you know, it's a massive underdog. And what you, what you guys were saying earlier about, you know, the media or mainstream not picking up on Liz's story, I, I, I really don't think that – I don't think that will play into anything. I don't think it will move the numbers. I don't think that will make her any more popular. Uh, people already knew her from Strike Force, her fighting a couple times in Strike Force. And I think after a while, those certain, you know, being in the military, being gay, I think after a while, those t- kind of things run its course. You know, one time you're in school – Second time, okay. Third time, I've heard it enough. So I don't. Would think this be the first time? That. On all the above. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I, I've already heard it. So, I mean, how many times can you play that? I mean, I think the UFC now they're trying to create characters, and you can't create characters if you're not in the business of creating characters. It, it has to happen naturally. So you can't just, you know, try to beat WWE or TNA and think, you know, just because you got a story that she's going to be a draw, people going to you know, gravitate to Liz Caboose or, or any other woman besides Ronda Rousey because everybody clearly sees that this is her show. You know, it's not the Misha Tate show, uh, Sir Coffin, who loves Sir McMahon, Sir McMichael, whoever they want to bring in. It's, it's all about this woman here. And if she loses this belt, then what happens to that division? You know, are they going to have a 145 out of it? Are they going to have 115? I mean, it's just going to be 135 for her and that's it. So, you know, this is clearly a one-woman show, and if she loses that title or all of a sudden she gets Gina Carano fever and she want to be a movie star, then what happens to this division? Then this division will go away. This is clearly, uh, to me, a, uh, a a little single up at Strike Force. Uh, I mean, Showtime, because they really screwed them out of this last show. They wanted this girl here. They wanted all these other fighters, and they basically, in my opinion, sabotaged Strike Force it's showtime in order to make this make this thing happen. Oh wow, that was a lot, Terrence. You've been holding this in for a while, haven't you? Yeah, well, well you gotta look at it. You gotta look at it. Like well, I think the last couple of months ago, we talked, and I say, oh, I've been I've been on Twitter, and I told, and I said, uh, well, everybody like is breaking news because the strike force show didn't happen. Well. We knew it was like a couple of months that wasn't going to happen because they gave her no press credentials. They didn't have nobody to fight uh, 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 D.C., uh, Daniel Cormier. So we all knew that. And then all of a sudden, you know, everybody, oh, he's still having a fight card and they counsel out the blue. Like, nobody knew this. And now all of a sudden, they, you know, a month to go later, all of them had this big show, Scott Coker comes along, we're going to have four title fights and this and that and this and that. And I say, none of this is going to happen. And what happens again? This guy, Melendez, gets hurt. Uh... The uh, Luke was Luke Rocco. He gets hurt. Yeah. So now they got another stripped down card, and Daniel Cormier fighting the guy that wants to change at the corner down here at Benaroli East Capital. I mean, so it's it's just 
you know, it's just a sabotage job, and they thought they were getting Ronda Rousey to fight in this card, and the UFC pulled the rug from, from them under that, and, and they also, you know, stripped them of Gilbert Melendez. And, I mean, not saying they did, but don't you think Dana could have called Gil and said, man, you know what, you know, act like you hurt, man, so you ain't got to lose to this bum. And not, no disrespect to Pat Healy, but he could have said that and say, you know, come on over here, you know, I'll slide you into the title fight maybe at 145 or 155, you get a meeting shot. You, you think Gil wouldn't say, my shoulder's hurt? I just think this is just a, a middle finger up against Showtime, to Showtime, that they could get all this talent over there without anybody having any injuries or any losses. And as you see now, Robbie Lawler's on the card, Bobby Volick. I mean, a lot of different guys are fighting on UFC cards already, and they still even have, haven't even had the final show. And they got guys for guys and women already trying to fight. Right. Yeah, I mean, I think you make some you make some good points. And uh, to be honest with you, I I definitely believe that that there are a few guys on the, that were on the Strike Force card that uh, conveniently got hurt, um, um, so that they can be ready to fight sooner rather than later in the UFC. I mean, that's where they want to be. That's where. Uh, that's where you want to be as a mixed martial artist, and um, the opportunity is right there. So, miss out on a, a, a smaller payday and, and wait out and probably get a slightly bigger one, or at least a more prestigious one in, in the UFC. Well, well, someone always told me the grass may be, you know, may look green on the other side, but it may not be greener. And all these guys that, you know, think they're going to come over to the UFC and have these great careers, your know, other option of strike force is gone. And, you know, trying to latch on these startup companies or these other uh, mid-level companies, you may not get those big paydays. Even though Strike Force didn't put on a lot of shows, they did provide guys with a good job, uh, national exposure. And with the UFC, I mean, you lose two fights or you're not one of Dana guys, I mean, you're not going to make a lot of money or you're not going to get that exposure or that title shot. you be fighting on few cards and, 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 and tough enough finals and stuff like that. So, and if you get cut, you be bumming around, you know, just trying to get a contract here and there. So the thing with Strike Force, it, it provided an outlet for other fighters that the UFC blackballed or didn't like, and that option is going to be is going to be gone. So all the guys that are happy to be in the UFC, I respect that. That's their dream. But at the end of the day, we are going to miss Strike Force in some shape or form. Do you not think Bellator will do a good job of filling in that second uh, second promotion <sighs> slot? I mean, they are just oh. they are on the brink of being on Spike Television, which is which will be a, a pretty huge step up for them in terms of a platform because nobody gets MTV too. Well, you, you know the thing with that, Eric, and I like Bellator, I like you know being a rebel and stuff like that. But the thing with Bellator is coming at ten o'clock after ten and eight, and are you going to be up at eleven thirty maybe to catch the last two fights in Bellator and you don't know the guys? And hey, sure, you may be watching the you know, King Morning main event or Paul Daly or some other UFC cast off rejects or stuff like that. But at the end of the day, you're not going to stay up and watch a uh, Christian Pumple. You're not going to stay up and watch that guy. So it, it's going to be, you know, some, some, some nights they're going to do good, some nights they're not. It all depends on what guys they get that falls off from the UFC, Strike Force Tree, or what have you, down the road and, and be they, be able to build their brand. I think starting out, you know, TNA draws like uh, up and down. TNA gets one point two, one point three million a week. If Bellator can hold on to half of that, and maybe out of that half, maybe lose, you know, maybe ten, fifteen percent over the course of their season, then that would be a success. But anybody thinking if it's Beyond Rugby and Kevin K over at uh, 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 Spike TV thinking they're gonna hold on to a million fans every week, it's not gonna happen. If they get anywhere between three, four hundred grand at the end of the conclusion of their season, that would be a success. But I don't see them holding on to huge numbers. You know, if King Mo fights great, Paul Daly, you know, maybe, but all the other guys, I think people are so long in the tooth against Bellator that they got an uphill battle to be uh, a consistent power in MMA ratings. You know, even if they can only hold on to half that audience that TNA brings in, that's still. Uh... You know, that's almost a third better than what uh, they get on um, MTV2. Right. I mean, MTV2, yeah. the wasteland of every rerun TV show in the world. So, uh, you know, I, I think that they'll do uh, uh, they'll do much, much uh, better on um, 
think they'll do much better on Spike. They'll have a little bit more exposure. But you do have a good point of, of it coming on kind of late. Um, you know, how many people are really going to be staying up for that? So we'll see. I mean, we'll have the benefit of being able to watch these numbers um, uh, as they grow and from the get go. And I think everybody will be paying a lot of attention to it because, you know, when the UFC first uh, was on Spike Television, was anybody really paying attention to ratings like that? And now that seems to be our focus. We're almost obsessed with numbers as MMA fans. So uh, I'm excited to see what kind of numbers it brings in and, and see if maybe um, TNA and um, Bellator will be able to help each other out in terms of numbers. So that'll be really yeah. interesting to see moving forward. Yeah, I know David's yeah. excited for it. I know David is going to be watching Bellator like he's lost his mind. Right, David? Yeah. I had to DVR and erase it before I watch it. <laughs> Rude. What about Christian and Boom Boo? He needs your he needs your eyeballs. You no, know, Bellator. That's the best way to watch it is DVR because sometimes you can't fall asleep on Bellator. I'm not gonna lie. They, they got to get better with the production and the, and the pace of the show. I mean, it just sometimes it drags out, and they got to get rid of the same guy that does the voiceover for all the four fighters. I mean. I, I can't have a guy with a, with you know with a with a Spanish accent. He's doing the same voiceover for a Russian fighter. I mean, they they got to do something better than what they do. But, <laughs> that is pretty yeah, funny. That is awfully it's funny. It's the same guy. It's the same guy. But you know what? I don't like with Bellator real quick, and it's, it's the fact that the champions fight non-title fights or out of their weight yes. classes, and they lose. And and Zola, Grizel, uh, whatever her last name is, yeah. <laughs> you know, she got knocked out last week and a week ago, or whatever. And it's like, okay, and now they said that was the last part of the contract. Yeah, it was a standing yeah. arm triangle, which, uh, you know, we ha- yeah. I can't think of the last time I've seen a that standing awesome arm impression. triangle like where it, it actually, like, won them the fight. I, I, yeah. I don't know. So, um, but they, in the titles and, and losing. I mean, this is like the third or fourth time that the champ set off in Bellator or outside Bellator. And and I just don't understand how can you be an undisputed champion when you lose in in, a, in another weight class, another tournament, or just like their other champion. I was a Don. Well, I can't think of his name, but the Brazilian kid they got beat in Brazil like three months ago. It you know they got to get away from that. I mean, if this guy's your champion, you defend the belt, or you don't fight, you know, on super fights, or you don't fight on other cards or anything like that. It, it cheapens the championship title. No, uh, I agree. They, they, they got to get away from that. They uh, got to get away from 100%, that. A hundred percent, I agree with you. And it seems to be this weird catch-22 because what I like about Bellator is the tournament format, but that same format prevents their champions from really fighting more than uh, maybe once or twice a year. Uh, and that's if there's no injuries, which we've seen that uh, that can be a serious problem, as it already is. Even if you are a champion, they gets to fight three times a year. So, um yeah, no, I agree with you. I think those um, non-title fights are annoying. And when they lose, because that is a risk, that is a possibility, uh, it demeans the title and, and, and um, it waters it down. And, 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 that's, and in that respect, Bellator will never, even if they had the same level of push and media exposure, just that alone would keep Bellator from ever really catching up to the UFC. I don't think that would happen anyway. I don't think that's a realistic expectation. Yeah, but if 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 we were in this world where they both start at the same time and they both have the same money and the same exposure, that t- that tournament format is going to hold them back because of that. Uh, I like the tournament format, you know, and I like following it, and I like seeing which guys get eliminated, and I like the little screen that they do afterwards, the full screen that they yeah. do, where they show the guys that are going to be fighting in the next show, and I, and I like, I really do like that, and um, I, I really do hope the UFC adopts something like that, so some sort of weekly television show that's similar, that's seasonal, you know, kind of like the Ultimate Fighter, but not really, really mm-hmm. not really not the ultimate fighter because uh, as much as i you know jones told me that he thought that it was uh this was one of the hardest things he's had to do was be on the show and and, and you know i assume he means by it being a, like an a fishbowl and being you know exposed and, and mind you chael sonin a very exciting dude um i love the way he talks shit uh the late great justin <laughs> cohey was not so much a fan but uh <laughs> Uh, and I will be presiding over uh, Justin Cohey's funeral, and I'll let you guys know when that is. But anyway, um, <laughs> it just—I uh, don't know. It, it, it's um, I like I like the tournament fam- format. That's, that's all I'm trying to say. And uh, I'll be watching tonight. Just to—I uh, I like the lightweight. No, you won't. Oh, 
Oh, I won't. No Bellator tonight. There's no Bellator tonight? <laughs> oh, that's so sad. It's done on MTV, too. Whoa. That's it. No more Bellator okay. tonight. Pairs on Spike. Not Mitchell. tonight. Not tonight. Oh, I have to wait to the 17. Come on, guys. <laughs> That's You're ridiculous, a real fan, Erica. Jesus, you'll be watching it when no one else. <laughs> well, I always DVR it and then just watch it really, really late at night. And there's nothing else on. Man, that makes me sad. I didn't realize they were. I thought we had one more show before we moved to Spike. No, nope, um, last week's was the last one. And, thankfully, it's yeah, done. <laughs> oh, I'm sad. Oh. Oh. Whatever. And that means no MMA tonight at all. Is there anything at all uh, coming out tonight? Uh, oh, yeah, they got, they got MMA, MMA on uh, access, you know, access TV tonight. Hmm. Public Access TV? Yeah. There's it's boxing on network TV tomorrow. Yes, for the second weekend in a row. Yep. Oh, you know what? This reminds me. This is the first time I've got a chance to talk to you guys. So we'll, we'll wrap up. This is going to be our last topic. Uh, the uh, Manny Pacquiao getting KTFO'd. Uh, Terrence, let me start with you because I know you had to have watched it. Right. So, what were your thoughts on, on Manny getting knocked out? Was that a uh, do you agree with Dana White that it was a bad move by Bob Arum having him fight somebody so tough instead of making the Mayweather fight, or is this kind of a blessing in disguise um, for for Manny maybe fighting against well, Mayweather? Well, well, take the Dana White thing first. Uh, uh, I talked to Mark Ratner like a year ago when he was here in D.C., and he said, uh, and they don't make this fight by December this year. And that was, uh, I think, a year ago when they had the, the uh, show here, versus show. And he said, it's not going to happen, you know, because there's too much that can happen in between these guys taking fights. So it will not happen if they don't make it by December or early, I guess, 2011. It didn't happen. And this is this is what happens. And... I never thought the fight was going to happen between those two guys, Mayweather and Pacquiao. So everybody that thought it was going to happen, it was just too many variables in play for that fight to ever take place. And Pacquiao had to fight, you know, fights that was going to get him paid. He had to fight fights that people wanted to see. And Marquez was his rival. And he barely beat Marquez last year in November. That fight was close and, you know, really close. And I thought Marquez yeah, yeah. won it. He didn't beat him. And, yeah, and, and, and now, you know, yeah, and, and now Marquez really, you know, got the, the true signature win by knocking him out. And this kills all any any talk of a name on a Pacquiao that was never going to happen in the first place. And also what this does is it creates another big payday for Pacquiao because at the end of the day, he had, what, two, maybe three fights left. So two of his last three would be with Marquez, and, you know, he'd ride off into the sunset. But I don't think boxing lost anything by not getting that fight because you look at the last – Look at the last four or five months of the fights that they've put out. And they've put out some good good fights on HBO, Showtime, and pay-per-view as well. They're pretty much set between the 140-pound and 154-pound division with guys like uh, Alvarez and, and Robert uh, Guerrero. I mean, they still got Victor Ortiz out there. Not great, but he's out there. Danny Garcia and Zab Judah and, and, you know, just so on and so on. The guys that you could just name. So, they Austin Trout, I, I know a name, Austin Trout. I know him. Yeah, with Austin Trout, he beat uh, my man Miguel Cotto like a drum. So they got guys out there that they can mix and match. And right now, and and and, and they don't you know don't get upset at me, but I think boxing has surpassed MMA in a sense because they're on network TV now, and people are more hungry now for boxing. And if you look when that Pacquiao fight was, didn't you see had a card that weekend and? They talk more about the boxing on ESPN and stuff than in the UFC. So you you still see where the uh, MMA is at as far as, uh, you know. That's because boxing is ESPN. That's true, but it's just, you know, boxing has made a real strong comeback. Look at the shows on Showtime and HBO now, how many shows they're putting out. I agree, I agree. And Nonino Donair last week looked amazing. They, they Austin Trout, really that's the name back. I know. Yeah, Austin Trout looked great against Cotto. Yeah. But uh hey, that that knockout was something else. And this was actually the only fight I thought Marquez beat Pacquiao three previous times. This was the only fight that I thought Pacquiao was winning. Like aside from the the knockdown in the third round and the knock the fuck out in the sixth round, Pacquiao mm-hmm. was winning this fight. Right. 
That's what the I, first that's time I ever saw him beat Marquez. So I, I think the Dana, um, or at least it was Dana's point or Erica's point, the risk in making Pacquiao Marquez, Marquez has been such a difficult opponent for Pacquiao. I mean, I don't think anyone will see him knocking him out, but he really is given Pacquiao all Pacquiao can handle three prior times. So it might have made more sense to to face a, a less difficult opponent as far as styles go. Because Pacquiao could still, you know, Pacquiao made $24 million for this fight. And, like, money is what prevented Pacquiao Mayweather from being made. I mean, it's a different business model because you have different promoters for Pacquiao and different promoter, promoter for, for Mayweather. So it's different from UFC or UFC. You know, UFC is the organization that, that controls all these fighters. It's much easier for UFC to put together a fight even though they still failed to make George St. Pierre against Anderson Silva. And, you know, that might fall apart at some point, too. It's not happening now. And uh, Anderson Silva against John Jones. If Anderson Silva loses at middleweight, all those super fights disappear. Right. So if, if UFC seems to have, uh, if they claim to have learned a lesson from this, I don't know if their booking is really proving that, except for, I guess, booking George St. Pierre against Nick Diaz over Johnny Hendricks against George St. Pierre. But even there, I don't think you're looking at that substantial a difference in vibes. You know, I think George St. Pierre against Johnny Hendricks is probably going to do 700,000. And against George St. against Nick Diaz, he'll probably do, you know, what, 900,000 at most. So it's only a few hundred thousand. It's not the huge difference that you lose from not making Mayweather for Pacquiao or not making George St. Pierre against Anderson or Anderson against John Jones. You know, shows that are going to do well above a million. And Pacquiao Mayweather would have done above two million. Right. But but those guys wanted – Pacquiao wanted a 50-50 split. And as far as Pacquiao is concerned, he's a huge pay-per-view draw too. This show did a million buys. So Pacquiao was probably entitled to that type of split. And, and both Mayweather and Pacquiao can take a, a much larger percentage of the money from, from different opponents. So they're probably making as almost as much money as they make against each other. So it doesn't really make that much sense for those guys to, to face each other necessarily. You know, and Pacquiao could still get $24 million to Marquez's – I don't even know what Marquez got. Is it six million? Maybe yeah, a little more. Million, Ten million. You know, when he's got that type of split, as opposed, you know, he probably would have gotten forty million to fight Mayweather if they could have put it together. And I don't know if the fight's totally killed. You could probably still make the fight. I think it's easier to make the fight now, but there's probably less interest in it. So it's probably less likely that they'll make it, but it's probably easier to make the fight. I mean, I imagine Pacquiao. Well, Pacquiao's probably going to fight Marquez again, and we'll see where they go from there. Oh, good God! Not again. Yeah. I, I think what you're looking at, really, Saul Alvarez is probably going to be the next main opponent for Mayweather as long as neither guy loses before then. Well, you know, Mayweather likes to fight Mexican fighters, so it will be, be Alvarez or uh, Robert Guerrero. That's what I've been hearing. So I think yeah, his next fight is going to be against Guerrero, and then uh, yeah. and after that, I think they'll do Saul Alvarez if they can. Right, yeah. yeah well, the next fight will be in May either way, but... You know, either way, like I say, I didn't know if that fight was going to happen, but, you know, the UFC, if they learn a lesson from it, then they need to, you know, go full blast with whatever, like you say, super fights they got, GSP, uh, Anderson Silver, John Jones. I mean, you got to make the fights, and especially with MMA with all the injuries that they have been having, you I mean, no time like the present. you got to make them make the fights. Agreed. All right, guys, let's go ahead and uh, close out the show. Terrence, stay online with us and, uh, so we can uh... – Holla at you after we get off air. Uh, we'll be back, uh, not next week, but the following week uh, for our show. Uh, same bat time, same bat channel, 5 p.m. Eastern time on 5fansradio.com. When we return, Cain uh, Velasquez will be world champion. And when we return, Cain Velasquez will be world champion. So happy days are here to stay. Um, uh, thanks to everybody. Thanks to Terrence, of course, for being on here. And um, you can follow us again on Twitter at Fanatics MMA. Or uh, at Fight Fans Radio. Uh, we are also on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash uh, uh, Fight Fans Radio. And um, what else can you do? Uh, we are on iTunes and we are on Stitcher Radio. So uh, uh, hook it up, guys, and uh, enjoy some of our other shows as well. So we'll talk to you guys later. Peace.